Hi everybody, this is Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. It has the same Broadcom ARM system on a chip and capabilities just like Raspberry Pi 5 single board computer. However, it comes as a system on a module for embedded customers. The idea is to build your own product and to embed Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 in it. In order to get started with this compute module, you need an I.O. board and eventually a case. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble the official Raspberry Pi I.O. board and case for Raspberry Pi compute module 5. I'm going to show you the exact steps how to assemble everything together, but before we proceed with the actual steps, let me show you the list of hardware that I'll be using. I have Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5, this is the light edition that has no eMMC and boots from microSD card, but the same steps can be applied to any other version of the Compute Module 5. The rest of the things are Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 I.O. board, Compute Module 5 I.O. case, an external antenna kit for wireless and Bluetooth communication, and the official Raspberry Pi 27 volt USB-C power supply. All components are on my desk and a screwdriver is also required to assemble them. At the beginning, I started with the unboxing of the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 and the installation of it to the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 I.O. board. The Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 is very compact and has a very small footprint of just 55 by 40 by 4.7 millimeters. It has four M2.5 mounting holes. On the back of Compute Module 5, there are two high density connectors. Each one of them has 100 pins. Align Compute Module 5 to the I.O. board and use these connectors to attach the Compute Module to the I.O. board. This is very important, take your time, make sure that the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 fits well on the I.O. board, double check everything before proceeding. After that, the second step is to do an unboxing of the star of this video, exactly the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 I.O. case. It is tightly fitted in a cardboard box. Using a screwdriver, separate the top of the I.O. case from the base by unscrewing the screws. There are four screws in total, two on each of the two sides. Thanks to the magic of modern technologies, I have increased the speed of this part of the video so that we can fast forward the boring part. Inside the case, you'll find a small plastic bag that contains four M2.5 screws and a silicon pad. They are all required for the next steps. Place the I.O. board into the base of the I.O. case. Align the four mounting holes, make sure that they match, and secure the board to the base with four M2.5 screws from the plastic bag that I've just mentioned about. Obviously, for this step of the tutorial, again, a screwdriver is required. I think you know the drill very well, so to save your time, I again increase the speed of the video in this part. The next step is to assemble the Raspberry Pi antenna kit. Remove the rubber plug from the antenna port on the base of the I.O. case. Disconnect the antenna from the cable and after that plug the SMA connector of the cable into the antenna port of the base of the case. This is uh, the bigger connector on the cable. Insert the other end of the cable into the antenna port on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. Reattach the actual antenna to the SMA connector. After that, you can adjust the angle of the antenna relative to the position of the I.O. case. It is important to note that the Raspberry Pi I.O. case for Compute Module 5 is metal, and this way it blocks or weakens the wireless signals because the metal reflects and absorbs radio waves instead of letting them pass through. This makes it harder for the onboard antenna on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 to send or receive signals reliably. As a result, wireless range and performance drop significantly. Using an external antenna places the signal path outside the metal enclosure of the Raspberry Pi I.O. case, restoring strong communication. Regarding these circumstances, if you are planning to use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity with your Raspberry Pi I.O. board and I.O. case, I highly recommend you to also purchase and install the Raspberry Pi antenna kit. 
The next step is to remove the protective paper from the silicon pad to review the adhesive surface. Stick the pad inside the base of the case such that the upper edge of the pad is flush with the bottom of the microSD card slot. This prevents a microSD card from falling into the case when it is inserted. This step is tricky because it wasn't obvious, at least for me, so I checked the assembly instructions provided for Raspberry Pi to make sure that I did it the right way. Remember to always read the documentation before you start. Or just watch my YouTube videos. Uh, I'm just kidding. Check the documentation too. We are almost at the end of the assembly procedure. Plug the fan power cable from the top of the I.O. case into the fan connector on the I.O. board. After that, rotate the top part of the I.O. case and place it above the base part of the I.O. case. Use the four screws to fasten it together. This way, the assembly of the Raspberry Pi compute module with the Raspberry Pi I.O. board for it and the case is fully completed. Let's have a look at the result and explore the available ports on the I.O. case. On the front we have a power button, both on the left and on the right side of the power button there are uh, openings for attaching either a display or a camera. On the back of the case, from left to right, we have a couple of HDMI ports. These are full standard HDMI ports, unlike on Raspberry Pi 5 single board computer, which comes with micro uh, HDMI ports. Between the HDMI ports, we have a couple of indication LEDs for power status. Next to HDMI 1 port, we have an Ethernet port. After that, we have a couple of USB ports. Next, we have a USB-C power in port for powering on the uh, compute module 5. After that we have a micro SD card slot and at the end next to the antenna, actually between the antenna and the micro SD card slot, we have an LED for SSD indication. I have the official Raspberry Pi 27 watts USB-C power supply. I'm based in Europe as you can see from the power supply and uh, it's a uh, Typically used with Raspberry Pi 5, but of course it can be used to power the uh, Compute Module 5 I.O. board too. In order to validate that everything is fine and that I have successfully assembled the Compute Module 5 to the I.O. board and to the I.O. case, I need to turn on the system and to ensure that it properly boots. For this demonstration, I'm using Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 Lite, which means that it has no built-in eMMC. Therefore, I'm going to boot this system from a micro SD card. As I have already mentioned at the beginning of the video, Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 is very similar in terms of capabilities with Raspberry Pi 5. Therefore, Raspberry Pi OS for Raspberry Pi 5 also runs on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. For the demonstration, I attached an HDMI monitor, I've attached a mouse, and I've attached actually a couple of mechanical keyboards. One of them is a small mechanical keyboard that's pretty nice, but the other one is more interesting. It's called Anavi Arrows. This is an open source hardware keypad with a rotary encoder and just four keys for the arrows that I have designed. The funny thing is that I have designed the printed circuit board inside Anavi Arrows around a module with the Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller. The same microcontroller is found on Raspberry Pi Pico. More than a decade ago, Raspberry Pi started as a foundation with a single board computer, but things have evolved in many different ways. We have the compute modules that I'm demonstrating here, but we also have Raspberry Pi microcontrollers. Both options are quite interesting for industrial customers. As you can see in the video, Raspberry Pi OS works as expected on the Raspberry Pi compute module. I quickly went through the steps to set it up and to create my user. Everything is fine. My installation with the Raspberry Pi compute module 5, the I.O. board and the case is successful. The Raspberry Pi I.O. case fits perfectly well with the Raspberry Pi I.O. board and compute module 5. Of course, after all, it has been designed for this purpose. It's very solid, it's a metal case. There is a fan and vents on both sides, which um, guarantee good air circulation. All the ports are on the back and it's very convenient to use them. There is a power on button 
from the front. Although it's definitely a nice case, there are several important shortcomings that I have to mention. First of all, because it's metal, if you're planning to use any wireless connectivity, no matter it's a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, I highly recommend you to use the antenna. Second, you don't have access to the 40-pin header, so you cannot easily attach um, add-on boards uh, for uh, research and development purposes. Third, which is actually related, you don't have a direct access to the UART port for early debugging. At the end of the video, I would like to wrap it up with some quick conclusions. The Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 I.O. case is compatible with the I.O. board and it's suitable for all versions of Compute Module 5. In the video, I used a version without EMMC, but you can also successfully use the same case and board with a version that features EMMC. The case is metal, therefore it's highly recommended to use an external antenna. Thank you for watching this video. Now you know how to get started with the official Raspberry Pi I.O. board and case for Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hit the like button. Stay tuned for new videos. See you soon.